An enormous figure, talking about $55 million being spent in the general election. But before that even happened, Kelly at first had to be uh, victorious on primary night uh, with the challenge against Jim Rubens, and she was, as we expected. That race was called early, and I'm fortunate enough to be joined by the incumbent senator tonight. Good to see you, Senator. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it very much. Obviously, you were the heavy favorite coming into this mm -hmm. thing, but... Uh, does the primary challenge make you a better candidate for the general? Absolutely, and I really appreciate Jim Rubens. He was very passionate. You know, we debated twice on television and appreciate uh, really his, his being in this race and, and us running, I think, a very vigorous race. Yeah, uh, we talk about moving into the general election. I mean, this has been Kelly uh, versus Maggie Hassan now for better than a year. $55 million in outside money. Does that add to the pressure or do you just try to drown that out? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that's been most disappointing, uh, Josh, is that when Governor Hassan got in this race, I offered her the People's Pledge, which is the same pledge, of course, that was in place uh, in the race in Massachusetts, also that Senator Shaheen offered in her race, and the governor refused it. And I think we could have kept all this outside money out, so it's been disappointing. I think we know um, we've seen all the negative ads, these false ads that have been coming up against me, and it's unfortunate that she's running a negative campaign because I want to focus on how do we get results for the people of New Hampshire and our positive vision. i got to ask you, in one of your ads, you kind of refuted some of the third-party yeah. accusations that were there. You were swinging the bat. I was, yeah. Was that... Did you have any warm-up or did you have any swings and misses there at all? <laughs> well, you know, I did a lot of swings that night, hit a few balls, and, you know, I loved the beginning as my son giving me the high five and the bat, so we had fun making it, and it really was to show the point of all these false ads from really these third-party special interests uh, that are trying to support Governor Hassan that don't have anything to do with New Hampshire, and so uh, it was fun to do that ad. You've been asked a million times about Donald Trump. I'm not going to do it again here, but... You will say that uh, you, you have said that you're running your own race. Yes. How difficult has that been to kind of run in a vacuum with so much noise and attention given to the top of the ticket on both sides? Well, you know, one thing I know about the voters in New Hampshire is that they, they pay attention and we really, the grassroots politics really matters. So I've been trying to get out this morning. I was at Shea Vashon and I, I got to deliver packages with the UPS today. And I want to say hi to my driver out there, Eddie. He was awesome. Um, so I think really that the voters in New Hampshire, they want to make sure that they see uh, the candidates up close and personal. Get, they get to ask them the questions. And that's the kind of race uh, that I ran in the primary. I'm going to keep running through the general election. I'm going to ask you to put on the analyst hat for a second now. Let's look at the Republican governor's race. Chris Sununu had the name ID coming in. Ted Gatz is to a lesser degree, but still better known than a Frank Edelblue, who is really performing well tonight. He sure is. What do you think it was about, uh, and I know you're running your own race, so I'm paying attention to this stuff yes. every day like we do. But well, Although I've seen them all on the campaign trail, I mean, I think the gubernatorial candidates have been working really hard. They've been out through throughout our state. Yeah, was there something about what he's saying in particular that is uh, putting a surprising number up there for him? No, so I mean, obviously, this is a really close race. This could go uh, late in the evening if it stays as close as it is now. And I just think this is one where they got out. Uh, they were out with voters in our state. And so you see a really close race from the hard work that they've done. Another close race is in the first CD. Moving forward in the general election, uh, are you just going to stay focused on your re-election bid to the U.S. Senate? Or is this going to be more of a united front, do you believe, with, uh, with the other successful Republican candidates? Well, I'll be, f I'll be focused certainly um, on the Senate race. And I'll be out meeting voters and talking to them about what's on their mind and talking to them about how we can get things done and how I can fight for them in the Senate. That's really what my focus is going to be. i got to ask you. I mean, we, we have 12 live shot locations out there. People have parties everywhere. Yeah. No party tonight? Well, not, not a party tonight. Um, we were out campaigning today. And, uh, the kids at home are watching, I probably. I did have a couple of kids with <laughs> some sports tonight. And uh, so we, we were able to have a little, little time for family dinner and finish some homework that needed to be done. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, today was fun being out campaigning. Yeah, and well, you still have a long, uh, how I'm many long, weeks? long, yeah. So we, you know, I think, what, 56 days, 55 days going into this election. And, but who's counting? No, I'm out there campaigning every day. And to a large degree, we hit a new gear now uh, against Maggie yeah. Hassan. And uh, you obviously have your differences with the, with the Democratic nominee who ran unopposed. What do you think the issues will be that, define this race outside of the top of the ticket questions about Donald Trump's statements or Hillary yeah. Clinton's integrity? I think it's really going to be about it's who can deliver results for the people of New Hampshire and who can be that strong voice for New Hampshire, no matter who's in the Oval Office. And in the Senate, I've been focusing on 
getting work done, for example, to pass the bipartisan heroin legislation, get better care for our veterans, and also fighting to make sure. I mean, you need a fighter in Washington, but someone who can work across the aisle like I have to get things done, for example, for our small businesses so they can create better paying jobs for our state. And of course, it'll be about keeping the country safe because those issues are very important. Certainly, and here in New Hampshire, you brought up the, the opioid crisis. Now, uh, there's been some third party ads attacking Governor Hassan over this issue. You've called on, on them to take it down because you have, don't want to politicize know, it. I think our focus on the heroin epidemic and it's been mine from day one is to work work on how do we get help for those people who are struggling with addiction how do we turn this around support our first responders and that's why in the Senate I worked for three years to finally get major bipartisan legislation passed the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act and that's really been my focus and getting the ideas from people in New Hampshire about how I can help make sure uh, that we turn this around for our state because you know, it's just a tragedy, all of the stories I hear of mothers and fathers who have lost their children or brothers and sisters who have lost a sibling. It's, it's just got to stop. Are you satisfied that the issue isn't being politicized to the degree that uh, you'd like it, you know, you want everybody rowing the boat in the same direction on this issue well, and not I, make it so I know partisan. what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep rowing the boat to get things done for New Hampshire. And, you know, getting that major bipartisan legislation passed focusing on making sure the funding comes for prevention, treatment, recovery, and also our first responders in New Hampshire. That's where my focus is, and, and that's where I think it should be. All right, Donald Trump's coming on Thursday. Any chance we see you there? Uh, I said I wasn't going to ask, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> I, you know, on, on Thursday, uh, unfortunately, we, um, my husband uh, lost his father, so we'll have a funeral then. I'm so. very sorry to no, hear about that. No, that's Certainly yeah. a sad time for your family, so uh, wow. my thoughts are with you. But congratulations on your victory tonight. Well, thank Best you. Best of luck in the thank general you election. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. And Appreciate apologize, it. Apologize to your family. No, your no kids. worries. You know, it's just uh, obviously um, my father in law was a great man, and so um, we're sad that this has happened, uh, but our family will be together then. Okay, well, thank you very much, Senator, for coming yeah, in tonight. Thanks Once again, so much. congratulations. Best of luck. Appreciate it.